Okay, so I heard you're a Christian? Yes, the rumors are true. Well, I'm glad you found something that works for you. Well, it doesn't just work for me. Christianity is actually true. It describes reality. And we're off to a great start, aren't we? Spoiler alert, Dude Boy just says this, and then, without a trace of self-awareness regarding the irony of his own argument, tries to tell his buddy that he's the intolerant one. Let's do this. Greetings, fellow space travelers. Bionic Dance here. And yeah, it's these geniuses again, doing their little video play that lets them have the opposing side say what they want them to say. Does anybody know who they think they're kidding? Or is it just a shameless circle jerk? Yeah, okay, it's true for you, but it's not true for everyone. And don't you think everyone has a right to believe whatever they want to believe? Yeah, people should choose their own beliefs. I'm all for that. But that doesn't mean that everyone's beliefs are true. Whoa, don't you think that's a little narrow-minded? Well, that's the way truth is. It's narrow and exclusive. The problem with the word truth is that it's far too easily manipulated, prevarication made far too effortless. In ancient Greece, the word for truth was aletheia, and it meant unconcealment, revelation. The mid-20th century philosopher Martin Heidegger wrote, to raise the question of aletheia, of disclosure as such, is not the same as raising the question of truth. For this reason, it was inadequate and misleading to call aletheia, in the sense of opening, truth. Heidegger then traced the concept of truth as correctness or fact to the word veritas, which is, unfortunately, the Latin version of Aletheia, both of them referring to the same goddess of truth in the Greco-Roman pantheon. And that's just one of the many ways the concept of truth gets muddled, sometimes deliberately. We just saw two people discussing truth, where one was obviously referring to Aletheia, while the other straw man disclaim as meaning veritas. And I think he knew he was doing it. 2 plus 2 equals 4. Right. But you just excluded lots of numbers. See, that doesn't mean you're narrow-minded. It means the truth is narrow, because it excludes all the answers that are not true. Okay, that works for math, but not for personal beliefs. My philosophy professor says there's two kinds of truth. There's absolute truth, like back in the Dark Ages, if something was true, it was objectively true for everybody, everywhere, all the time. But now he says we're enlightened, and we know there's no such thing as absolute truth. Again, Aletheia versus Veritas. I don't necessarily agree that there is no absolute truth in the Veritas sense. The 2 plus 2 equals 4 example is pretty clear because we can demonstrate it, and I'd be more inclined to describe that as fact, Veritas, because as we're seeing right here, truth is far too easily manipulated. And hold on to your hats, because we're about to see not merely manipulation, but smug prevarication. Is it absolutely true that there's no absolute truth? Absolutely. And the other kind of truth is where each individual creates his or her own reality. That's called relative truth. And does your relative truth apply to me too? Huh? Our Christian friend is clearly trying to say that it's circular and hypocritical to claim that there is no absolute truth, because that is an absolute truth. But when the counter-argument to a claim is clearly deliberately missing the point because of awkward phrasing, that's where it's dishonest. So let's rephrase. It is Aletheia, revealed to us, that veritas, absolute truth or fact, does not exist. That's not perfect, but it'll be much harder to make a straw man argument out of it. And, again, I'm not certain I agree. We can certainly find demonstrable fact, thus showing that veritas truth is possible. Is the relative truth you've created true for everyone, or just you? Oh, relative truth applies to everyone, everywhere. So, relative truth is absolutely true? Absolutely. Uh-huh, yeah. Are you kidding me? This straw man argument isn't just dishonest, it's obnoxious, rude, and disrespectful. The whole point of relative truth is that people have different perspectives and perceptions. That everyone has relative truth is absolutely true. We all have our own point of view. But this is clearly being manipulated to mean that each person's relative truth must be veritas truth to everyone else. Look, with so many beliefs out there, you can't just go around believing that your belief is right. Hmm. Is your belief that you shouldn't believe your belief is right, right? Yeah. 
If you go around saying that Christianity is absolutely true, it makes people who disagree with you feel bad. It's a form of oppression. It's hate speech. And that's why our campus has all those safe spaces. Let me get this straight. If our beliefs are different, that means I'm oppressing you, I hate you, and you're not safe? Uh, pretty much. Now all of a sudden, Hoodie Guy is a precious SJW snowflake. My goodness. Here's the thing, though. Do you know anybody who would say that Christians claiming their religion is true is hate speech? Seriously, that is hate speech. No, no. It's when theists, not just Christians, try to force their beliefs on other people through force, legal or otherwise, that people start getting cranky, and justifiably so. But just claiming your bullshit is the one true bullshit, that's not hate speech, that's comedy. Oh, come on. Are you feeling oppressed right now? Well, no. I just think people shouldn't express their personal beliefs. Dude, you're expressing your personal belief that expressing a personal belief is wrong. Well, let's not make value judgments like right and wrong. So saying an idea is right or wrong is wrong, right? The problem with arguments like these is that the guy keeps making the same boneheaded equivocation that, to respond to each one, would make my own video awfully boring and repetitive, but to just let his arguments play out without response starts edging into copyright violation territory, but to cut any of them out would be to not reveal his thorough chowder headery in all its glory. It's a difficult balance to walk when debunking bullshit. You're right, it's wrong. Telling someone they're wrong is just not right. Uh, right. It's what's known as intolerance, and that's one thing society should never, ever put up with. Intolerance. Yeah, like, okay, for example, you Christians always say that Jesus is the only way. That's about as intolerant as you can get. Lots of people aren't Christians. Just think how it makes them feel. By that logic, expressing different political beliefs, different food preferences, or the fact that Star Wars is far superior to Star Trek is also hate speech and intolerant. No, no. Intolerance is not merely telling someone they're wrong, but telling them their differing opinion should be suppressed, that they should be prevented from engaging in harmless behaviors based on beliefs not held by other people. Is this truly what Christians think other people believe? Because if so, give me their PayPal account and I'll send them the money to go out and buy a clue. But it's a fact that Jesus made the exclusive claim that he was the only way to God. That's just your opinion. No, really, I didn't make it up. It's a historical fact that he made that claim. No, you douche nugget. It's your opinion that the claim itself is fact, that what the claim, uh, claims is not merely Aletheia, but is, in fact, Veritas. But hey, keep up with the straw man arguments. I'm sure that'll impress the audience. Well then, if Jesus made that claim, then he was intolerant. Wait a sec. If your doctor tells you that one and only one particular medicine will cure your disease, do you tell her she's being narrow-minded and intolerant? No. This is the same thing. Jesus is saying that he's the one thing that all of us need. Actually, it is possible that a doctor could be narrow-minded in such a circumstance. Like, if there's a new medication that they don't like or don't trust and won't try, no matter how much testing there is or how many other doctors agree it's harmless. I had my doctor once bump up the dosage on my epilepsy meds, and it made me feel like crap. Looks like my doctor was wrong. Fortunately, he let me drop back to my previous dose, but he could have quite narrow-mindedly told me no, that I must keep taking the dose that made me feel awful. So, yeah, when someone says there's only one way, that may not be intolerance, but it's definitely narrow-minded, especially if, as with Jesus, what's said is not merely not demonstrated, but is said to not be demonstrable, is unfalsifiable. And when we're told that either we fall in line or will be tortured, that's when it starts edging into intolerance country. Tolerance means that you disagree with someone, but you still give them the right to be wrong. Okay, wow, this is cool. Do you have time for coffee? Let's see if we can tolerate each other some more. Sounds good. The funny part is that the ultimate message is actually not horrible. Tolerating people you disagree with is great. Please do that. The problem is how many Christians, you know, don't. And they're going for coffee. If you saw my last video response to these guys, you know how well that's gonna go. How tolerant are you? Take the tolerance quiz and find out. A quiz, you say? Ten questions. Okay, let's give it a try. Question one. No one has the right to disagree with or criticize another person's life choices. 
not actually a question, but okay, I disagree. People have the right to criticize or disagree. Question two, college students should be protected from hearing ideas they disagree with because it could make them uncomfortable. No, college should be about challenging people. Disagree. Question three, people should have the freedom to believe and publicly promote that two men or two women should be allowed to get married. Of course they should. Mind you, I'm a smidge biased being a lesbian and all, but hey, say what you like in public. Question four, a wedding photographer should be forced to use her artistic talents to celebrate and memorialize a same-sex wedding, even though it violates her conscience and deeply held religious beliefs. Aha, our first truly bullshit question. A wedding photographer was in business, deciding to intolerantly discriminate against clients on the basis of their sexual orientation is the one being intolerant here. If she wants to have a business, she should be prepared to serve the public regardless. Agree. Of course, I understand how it might be seen as intolerance in either direction, but the intolerance was definitely begun on the theist side. I'm sure that the question will be biased and the quote-unquote correct answer will be disagree. Question 5. No one should be compelled to embrace any religion against his will. Of course, your religion is your choice. Agree. Question 6. People should have the freedom to publicly promote their view based on science, yeah right, that unborn babies are genetically distinct, living, and whole human beings and that their human rights should be protected by not aborting them. The question is about expressing it, not mandating it, so yes, agree. Question 7. Parents should have the freedom to believe, publicly promote, and teach their children that God designed marriage for a man and woman for a lifetime. Again, yeah, those parents are assholes, but they should have that freedom, much as it turns my stomach. Question 8. Muslims should have the freedom to believe and publicly promote that Allah is the one true God and Muhammad is his prophet. Well, yeah, believe what you like and state it if you must. Agree. Question 9. It's not okay to respectfully challenge the truth of another person's sincerely held beliefs. Well, of course it's okay. Disagree. Question 10. People of faith should not be forbidden to worship God according to their conscience or to express freely and publicly their deeply held religious convictions. Of course not. Worship however you like. Just don't use it as an excuse to be an asshole to other people. Agree. Okay, let's get my results. Well, what do you know? Very high. Okay, good. We knew that. To be fair, I tried changing my answer on the photographer question, and it still came up the same, so I guess there isn't a maximally tolerant result. Compared to the video, this quiz is oddly fair. Strange. Unexpected. Well, in any case, until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance, saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please, think. Even YouTubers need Ferraris. Please donate on Patreon. Hey, this is a nice computer you got over here. Be a shame you didn't subscribe to Bionic Dance. I'd hate for something bad to happen to it.